So, good day, Mr. Taniguchi. Nice to welcome you in our uh, agency. So, it's the first time you're in Armenia and you were here to conduct a seminar. Can you tell us uh, what were the key ideas of this seminar? A seminar is the one that I gave already to the members of the Foreign Policy Academy associated with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Armenian government. Um, the turnout was very good, more than dozens of people eager to listen to what I had to say. I spoke mostly about the similarities and differences between the world outlook of the Armenians and that of the Japanese. It was very much a rewarding experience. And by the way, thank you very much for having me in this important centennial year of your agency. So, uh, last year, Armenia and Japan uh, celebrated 25th anniversary of diplomatic relations. Uh, and Armenia's uh, foreign minister, Eduard Nalbandian, recently stated that uh, the political relations between these two uh, countries have passed a significant path uh, of development. So, what do we have now in bilateral relations? What, let's say, achievements can you mm, mention? One of the most important founding stones for the bilateral relationship of this kind was to lay the ground for future investment. And the fact that Armenia, Japan, both have been able to have this mutual investment treaty, uh, which might sound just like a small step forward, but it was actually tantamount to having to lay the foundation stone. Uh, it's a stone that's to last for decades, even a century or two. Uh, so on that, we're hoping that further development is going to be done to enrich the economic relationship between the two nations. So you mentioned about the treaty investment, yes, uh, the investment, um, the agreement, about the agreement on liberalization and investment, which was signed on February 14 between Armenia and Japan. So Armenia uh, is the first country in the region which signed such, a, such an agreement with um, Japan. And was, let's say, from this perspective, it was really a very important step. So. Uh, let's say, what priorities do you see now uh, for further boosting the economic relations? It must start by sending uh, representatives from the government and the business uh, each other to uh, Japan from Armenia to Armenia from Japan. Without the knowledge, uh, we cannot build our stronger relationship. And so I am hoping that more uh, representatives from the Japanese business community will visit Armenia. And I have to mention that uh, the visa requirement between the two nations has been made uh, much, much lighter. And it's uh, far easier than ever before for the Armenians to visit Japan and vice versa. And Japan is, um, is a country that uh, you should think of uh, visiting once, uh, it's much actually affordable, uh, more affordable than you might think. So we spoke about investors um, and uh, what can we say, what problems uh, do these businessmen from Japan, for example, face in Armenia? Uh, in other words, uh, what conditions do they need to make investments, particularly in um, Armenia? I think that's the kind of things that uh, both the Armenian business people and the Japanese people, business people, could work on and develop. What's important is to learn from each other. Uh, obviously, the number of people in Armenia is not large. We're not talking about India. We're not talking about China. The domestic market of Armenia is not big, but if you look around, uh, the size that you have in Armenia is uh, uh, smaller than, let's say, in the, the, the one in Singapore. In Nordic nations, you have smaller nations. So you're, you're actually seeking an open, small economy. And history tells you that small, open economy has been more successful than otherwise. And uh, the Japanese business community should also benefit from the fact that you have more Armenians 
outside Armenia than inside. And it's a, it's a huge diaspora community, and uh, that, that will uh, give the uh, Japanese business representatives something that uh, they could not get uh, elsewhere. What, let's say, spheres do you see as prominent from, let's say, a perspective of Japanese investors to make investments in Armenia? What spheres uh, will you, let's say, uh, mention? You know that the Japanese senior citizens have a lot of people that are rich and that have a great amount of savings and they are eager to spend them. So tourism, obviously, is among the best promising industries that, again, Armenia and Japan must jointly develop. Uh, tourism is one, and I think the Japanese should drink more alcohol, alcoholic uh, beverages produced in uh, Armenia. And third of all, uh, you must tell the Japanese people more that here is actually a birthplace of many things, including Catholic uh, uh, Christianity, and uh, uh, wine and, uh, and so on and so forth. And the more they get curious about uh, Armenia, uh, the more people will come from Japan. So tourism is promising. Well, second of all, uh, I know that uh, Armenian government is spending a lot of money in developing human talent for the future industries. And the future industries are already around us. We're talking about in in information technology, artificial intelligence, and given the size of the population, it's striking that you have uh, geniuses uh, in many respects, chess, mathematics, and so on and so forth. And I think uh, that talent must be explored by the Japanese industrialists. By the way, we spoke about wine. Have you tasted Armenian wine? Uh, yes. Yes, and yes. what can you say about the taste? Um, well, I think it, it's great, um, but... Um, I just arrived yesterday and I uh, fell asleep very much easily. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Mr. Taneguchi, you know that Armenia is a member of European Economic um, uh, Union, Eurasian, excuse me, Eurasian Economic uh, Union. Also, last year we signed an agreement, a comprehensive and enhanced partnership agreement with the uh, European Union. Um, so, different experts, uh, let's say, uh, speak about their opinions, state their opinions. Uh, which were sometimes, let's say, pro or against um, <laughs> these multi-vector policies. So what can you say about such a multi-vector policy from Armenia? How it can impact uh, on um, uh, the relations between Armenia and Japan? Mm. Well, I do understand that's the path you should seek. By path, I mean you have to pursue all directional policies. Uh, nothing is white and black, nothing is stark. You must cut a subtle niche balance with everyone. So much is what uh, uh, you are now looking at, which is very much understandable. The fact that you have had this uh, comprehensive agreement with the Europeans is a huge leap, I would imagine, for you. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I know that you must seek uh, equally uh, better opportunities for, with Russia, with your you know, neighboring countries and so on, Iran. Uh, you know, those are the things that you must continue to pursue. And that's something that is very much easy to be understood uh, by the Japanese, by, um, by other people as well. This kind of a questioner, you know that Armenia is going through, let's say, a um, process of changing the system of gover governance, let's say, um, going to the parliamentary system. And on the 2nd of March, our National Assembly elected uh, the fourth president of Armenia. And so what can you say about this? Uh, how can it, let's say, impact on our relations? And what will be your message uh, to Armenia in this process, in this transitional process? It's been... 25 long years. It's one way to say that. But it's also been um, 25 short years since Japan had the diplomatic relationship with Armenia. And over the 25 years, uh, we have seen a trajectory rather stable in Armenia to 
change your institutions to better uh, accommodate people's will and people's desires. And that's, a, that's something that not many countries are able to do. And uh, on that point, I uh, give uh, tribute to the people in Armenia and to those leaders that have led the country to where it is. That said, uh, democracy, don't you think, is pretty much a curious animal. It takes, for, for humankind, it takes, I don't know, 20 years to get mature, or even, even shorter than that. But for democracy, it takes generations to mature. And uh, I think the Japanese government and people in Japan are uh, even more willing to be running alongside Armenia uh, to seek a uh, uh, trajectory that is sometimes bumpy and other times uh, stable, rain or shine. Uh, but uh, I know that uh, uh, democracy um, uh, takes years and generations to mature. And my point is, I would like the Japanese people to run alongside the Armenian effort to uh, improve your institutions. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you very much.